My next book that I'm starting to read and gather, and I've been, this has been germinating, I've been pregnant with this idea, is that what we're learning in integral recovery is, guess what? It's not just for our beloved alcoholics and addicts. It's for everyone. It's for all human beings that have a body, that have a brain, that have a mind, who live on the world and are suffering. And that just covers about all of us. So the same transformative uh, healing practices that we recommend are good for us all. And I started when I was doing, initially doing this work, we, we not only work with the, with the addict or the identified patient in the family, but we work with the whole family. So I had everyone reading the book and doing the practices and doing the meditation, the exercise and different techniques and technologies. So it's not just, I want to get this, this addiction thing out of the, the uh, addiction ghetto. And, and this might be, you know, I don't know. But I think the time is coming and should be now where this, the whole anonymous thing is no longer necessary because it, addicts are us, baby. They're us, they're our family, our people, uh, me, you, it's just out there. And we don't have Cancer Anonymous, we don't have Diabetics Anonymous, we don't have Heart Disease Anonymous, because there's no, there's no shame associated with being, uh, having a disease. You've got it. And so I guess the only shame would be not taking responsibility. Mm -hmm. And integral recovery is a call for taking responsibility for your life and becoming the best version of who you are, not just for addicts, but for all of us. I really love this. You know that for the last couple of years, I've really focused on working on reducing shame and stigma mm -hmm. in and around recovery. And uh, I shared this with you. I just went uh, two weeks ago to Las Vegas to a week-long conference called the Lifestyle Intervention Conference. And this was a conference on all the addictions except for alcohol and drugs. So it was all the behavioral addictions. Ironically, it was in Las Vegas. And so we focused on sex addiction, gambling addiction, uh, shot, uh, a food addiction, et cetera. Uh, by the way, the organizers intended it. It felt like when in Rome. Absolutely. And so that was really the idea of it. But one of the things uh, I, I got a chance to, to present there, one of the things I presented is that the Center for Disease Control, their latest statistics, and you cited today, is that over the age of 12 here in the United States, one out of 10 people is clinically addicted to alcohol and other drugs. Yes. So that's one out of 10. But here's the more interesting statistic to me, which I just cited, which just came out of a Harris poll just published uh, a few uh, in the last few months, is that 90% of us have at least one behavioral addiction across a lifetime, yeah. which is tantamount to saying all of us have it because the other 10% are lying. Yeah. And, and it's at least one behavioral addiction. So all the other addictions, whether you mentioned work addiction earlier on, internet addiction, which is rampant, is that it is universal. And so I'm right with you. If we could pull this out of the closet, help reduce the, the two greatest barriers to people, so from a psychological perspective, from people going to you to seek treatment, are personal shame. I feel, I feel like I'm a complete loser yeah. uh, because of this or that addiction. And cultural stigma, which silences us. Yeah. If, I, if I know that it's, what did Woody Allen say? He says, I don't know what addiction is, but I'm pretty sure it's not a compliment. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it, it, it is that we know it, that we, it's the unspeakable. So if we can do what you're talking about, which is, I'm, I'm supportive of you. In fact, the, the uh, recent movie, The Anonymous People, addresses this whole That's piece. Is how do we, how do we uh, reduce the anonymity, the shame and stigma, so people can access this? And these people are us, I think. Yeah. That's key. And, and, uh, and one more little thing sure. is that often... Uh, those of us who are addicts and alcoholics, they're not the weakest, the most awful, the worst this. of us. I love this. They're the most talented, they're the most beautiful, they're the most precious. Uh, Robin Williams recently and all the, all the artists and the actors and, the, and the, the musicians that we've lost over my lifetime, the tragic loss. What if we could have had Jimi Hendrix around for another 50 years? John Bonham, Keith Moon. There you go. There Jim you go. Morrison, uh, Janis, Janis Joplin. Joplin. On and on. So uh, <laughs> you guys are worth it. You yeah. know, don't feel... Don't feel bad because you're feeling bad, and, and let's work together and, and get ourselves well. And on the way to healing you, we're healing ourselves, and we're healing everyone. So let's work together and get this thing done and take it out of the closet. Thank you, John. This is excellent. Appreciate it. Very much.